begin. Now, first of all, I'll start with a um, short, well, explanation of why the quality of my understanding of the stuff of the lecture of today is lower than usual. This is actually an easy lecture, but I slept roughly three hours tonight. And, and actually, first, oh, Yes, yes, we know. No, we know. It's a modern board, not for your bad. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, the, the, the market. Oh, they are all marked. Yeah, the marvels of uh, modern technology. Now, no, and actually, the reason why I woke up tonight is actually like the least serious and professional thing you can imagine. I kind of woke up and I, I got the car yesterday back from the LPG uh, uh, solar, and I, I just woke up at 3.30 <laughs> and wanted to drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did that. No idea. And I, I'm sorry, but yeah, life sucks. <laughs> so, what we've uh, covered so far, oh, and by the way, around smaller, please. Now, uh, what we've done so far is um, we know that there's a file, which is pretty easy to read. Then we get um, a list of characters. Then the next step was the tokenizer or lexer. Tokenizer. We call it tokenizer because it returns tokens. Yes. So it returns the tokens. The tokens are data structures. Uh, do we have more elements in the list of cars or in the list of tokens? On the car. Why? Because it, it exists of two, uh, two cars and one token. Yes. So in general, and, and why is this always less? So why is this actually? Why does this actually less, make less sense? Equal. Less or equal. Less or equal. That could be equal. less. Very yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. But so these are these are less because. A token compared to a character is more or less expressive? More. More, because a, a letter like E doesn't mean that much. A letter E, as in while, so the last letter of while, well then it, it, it just becomes a piece of a bigger concept, which is the fact that we have a while keyword here. Okay? Now, after we have tokenized, and we have these tokens which are more expressive than characters, so we go up in expressive. Every token encodes more information, uh, uh, the tokens, sorry, encode more information than the elements of the list of cars. After the tokens, what do we do? Uh, the order. Yes. First of all, what's the name of the process? Parsing. Parse, yes. Parse. After we parse, so the tokens are a list. What the parser returns, is it a list? Is it a list of elements? No. I hear no. Well, it can't be a list. Sorry? It cannot be a list because so you can count for it. The tokenizer might say something like you have int3 followed by plus, followed by int four, right? When, when we parse this, what do we get back? No, we don't get a list. It's going to say it's lower and successful. Yes, but which one? So what is this? Is it, this is something, this is what the file looked like. But we want the hierarchy. Yes, but why? What is this expression? What do we call it? We call it a operator. The whole thing, the whole operation. What do we call it? A sequence. No, it is not a sequence. It's yeah. an addition. It is an, we are talking about something very simple. We call it an addition. addition. Okay. So if this is an addition, then here we have three elements which are one after each other. But if we want to see that these elements go together, then we have to create a single element which is something like plus of int3 and int4. 
which we can represent as plus which children are three and four. So what we get is a hierarchy. So we go from the list of elements which have no structure whatsoever. We just know that we have these elements in the file. Whether or not they make up meaningful expressions, we have no idea. And what we do, we build up a hierarchy. Uh, in case we had something like 3 plus 4 times 5, what we would find from the tokenizer is in 3 plus, uh, in 4, So what we find, what does the tokenizer give us in this case? Is the order so important? Yes. Why? We, who wins? Depends on the priority. Sorry? Depends on the priority. Depends on the priority, exactly. So what the parser does is, in this sequence, is the priority evident? No. No, it is a sequence. It is literally just a bunch of things, one after the other. But what this is actually is, is this an addition or a multiplication, this expression? Oh. <laughs> In the end it's multiplication. No, no, no. What is this expression? Is it an addition or a multiplication? It is an addition. Because this is plus of 3 and whatever the result of 4 times 5 is. So the operation is an addition. An addition where the first element is 3 and the second element is is times. Be careful because times in a parser is a symbol. It's the expression on the right. Which is also an expression with the times in the middle is a multiplication. It's a multiplication. Yes. So what we have here is a multiplication times. What do we have here? No. <laughs> Four and five. Okay. This does this look like a list? No. It looks like a tree, and the tree gives us the priority of the operators. So, what the parser gives us is the tree that describes the order of the operations, actually the reverse order of the operations. So at the root, we have the last operations. At the leaves, we have the first. So we actually perform 4 times 5 before we perform the plus. So we get a syntax tree. Which we can also call uh, expression or Now, the techniques for building a syntax tree, uh, we have seen them last lecture and you have all implemented them in the last days. Embarrassed silence is used. Now, now that we have the syntax tree, what can we do? What can't we do? <laughs> Actually, now that we, when we have the syntax tree, we have everything we want about the structure of whatever was in the file. Literally, the structure of the original file. So, what is the most interesting thing we might like to do? Execute. Execute. Solve it is a weird way of saying execute. Uh, so, we can run it. And if we run it directly from the syntax tree itself, what we are going to do is interpret it. So interpreter. What is the result of the interpreter? No, no, the, the interpreter doesn't give an executable file. 
it is literally just the, the application of the semantics. Um, not the semantics, uh, an instance of the semantics. So the semantics is the description of all possible behaviors of all possible programs. An instance of the semantics. Okay? So uh, we could we could we could call it roughly a run. Okay? According to the semantics. Okay. So let's begin with well let's now discuss the semantics. The semantics of three plus five times minus one. What is the meaning of this? What does it do? It puts numbers together. Yes, absolutely. One of the things that the semantics tends to do is a uh, kind of eat away stuff until it gets to something that is simpler. So typically, we start with a program which is a complex specification and we kind of want an answer. Now, this is a, an oversimplification, but usually this is what we do. We want an answer from whatever we are computing from a bunch of inputs and a complex expression that puts them together. So this puts this stuff together. Uh, what? No, it didn't come out nicely. So some magic happens, and what do we get? Minus eight. Minus eight. How? So we get minus eight. What is the first step? We don't get minus eight. We get minus two. Guys, I didn't sleep at least with my answers. <laughs> Not an extra use. So, minus two. You forgot the exclamation mark. I am slower than usual. Come on, people. <laughs> some, some, some people. Now, um, what is the first step of this semantics? Certain things are priority. Certain things are priority. What is the first thing that is computed? Brackets. The stuff in the brackets, okay? Which is just minus one directly. <laughs> so we, we can kind of skip it. So come on, what is the first operation that is computed? Multiplication. Multiplication. So this is the first thing. What we get is 3 minus 5. Yes. The next thing is we complete this. And finally, we get the minus 2. OK? So the semantics consists in applying a series of steps according to the order of priority and joining them together. Now, this is the semantics of, uh, do you know what we call this? It is an expression. This is literally an arithmetic expression. So the semantics of an expression uh, we are going to define with um, the arrow with an E. So what is, well, what's on the left of the arrow? The expression, the expression itself. What is on the, that sucks, doesn't it? So, at the left of the expression, uh, of, of the arrow, we have an expression, and on the right, what do we have? The value. The answer. The answer. And what is the answer? I, I, value is, is reasonable. So, I'm going to say a value v here. Uh, are values always integers? Make me an example of an expression that returns not an integer, just something that is not an integer. Yes, for example, 3 times 5 divided by 2 times 3. No idea what this returns, doesn't matter. Uh, another one that does not return an integer or a float. Speaking, speaking a double is a float. Yes, make me an example. Something that returns a boolean. Three is smaller than five. Three yeah. Yeah. is smaller than five. First half yes, second half no. That is weird. Well, don't worry. Now, um, so a value is, um, in this primitive interpretation of the language, well, anything that we can represent that we want to be able to return. So in this case, in our tiny language that we are informally building, a value is 
an integer, a boolean, or a floating point number. Okay? Floats actually we can just ignore. But for the purpose of, uh, of in, for, for interesting things, integers and booleans are, uh, are enough. Okay? They are enough as an example uh, because they might be interesting also in understanding how do we deal with something like this. It can be written. The parser has no. It is not the job of the parser to understand what it does. So if we get this, then uh, what should we return? Do we return a value? We return an error. So a value is either. So a value is going to be either. We said an int, a bool, or an error. Okay. And we can kind of assume that error plus anything, error greater than anything, just propagates. Okay. The moment we get an error, the error gets propagated above. Okay. So we want to be able to also return an error of the execution of the program. Okay. Good. Now, I will now write another example of an expression, which is x plus 1. What does this return? x plus 1, is it still an expression? Yes. Can we evaluate it directly? Because we don't know what x is. Where would we look to find the value of x? For this expression. In the instances, uh, right? Where? Yes. So. But this is the expression, right? Yes. Okay. This is the expression. If I want to be able to define the evaluation of the expression, what else do I need? The value of x. The value of x. Just of x, but if I write expression x plus y? Yeah, x, and y. x and y. What if I write x plus y times z? Yeah, and you need the variance of all the variables. And I need the values of all the variables. Of all the variables. Yes? So, uh, uh, what do we call the place in a computer where the value of variables is stored? Memory. So, I'm going to say that. At the left of the arrow, so the input of the evaluation of the expressions is what? The expression itself plus plus memory. So I'm going to say M comma E. Does this not make sense? So we get memory, we get the expression, and we return the value. Now, so in this case, memory will be something such as a bunch of stuff. We don't need to write all of it. We just, so we are going to write only the things that we are interested in to do evaluate an expression, but they are still in memory. We just don't write all of them because we could have well, kind of a lot of stuff in memory. So we have a bunch of things, then we say that x is connected to well, 50, then we have a bunch of more stuff, then we have expression x plus 2, we evaluate this, and what do we get? What do we get? 52, yes, absolutely, good. Now, We have a separate definition for every possible expression that we will get. So how many possible expressions uh, do, we, do, do we wish to support? Uh, I'm going to begin by saying an expression E1 plus another expression E2. Is this a valid expression? Okay. Yes. Then times. times E1 times E2. Then no, that's identical to classes. So all other operations. Now something of a different genre. Equal. Equals. Or greater than. Greater than. Greater than. Yes. E one greater than e two. I'm going to use greater than because it's less ambiguous than equals. 
equals can also the conclusion with the with the sign. Okay, okay. So we have integer operations, uh, boolean operations. What else? An error. Sorry. An error. We were allowed to expression the error, error, the error. In an end of lifetime, yes, we could something like throw exceptions, whatever. Yes, it 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 would make perfect sense. Uh, uh, something more basic. Mm, no, brackets are implicit because uh, e one and e two are expressions. So just the number. It, it's that I like. So did you get why? So the brackets are already implicit in how you put the operator. So if you want to put the brackets later, then you have e one plus e two. And then e2 is actually 3 plus 5. So you put implicitly the brackets. Now, is a number an expression? Why not? I mean, why not? Just because it's easy to evaluate doesn't mean it is not an, it is not an expression. Um, I'm going to say here, uh, oh, actually, so, yeah, n is, uh, n is clear enough. Then another simple expression? A variable. Is a variable an expression? Yes. So x. Also a boolean, etc. So then we have all the possible ground values. Now, uh, let's begin then by saying I want to evaluate m with memory m number m. What do I get? n is a number. So I'm evaluating an expression such as uh, I have memory here with lots of values. Then I am evaluating value 3. So the answer is 3. So the answer is 3. So in the general case, the answer was n. n. Does it make sense? Does it make, does it make a difference whether this is 3, 50, or a million? Okay? I want to evaluate a constant expression. The constant expression evaluates to the constant itself. Good. Now, uh, let's say I want to evaluate a variable x. What am I going to do? You're going to get x, which is in memory. Yes. So where do I get it from? From m. From m. So I will read the value of x in m, yeah. okay? So um, this we can write as follows. Is, it, is this reasonably intuitive? Yeah. So imagine x is a variable, a variable you can imagine as a, kind of a, a pointer, an address, whatever, and m is an associative container that even the address of a variable returns the value, okay? Pretty, yeah? So um, if we have memory, and in memory we have a bunch of things, then uh, we have variable i, which has value 10, and then we try to evaluate here i, what we get is 10. Okay. So these are the base cases of evaluation. We call them base cases because you cannot go any further down, exactly. They are the most basic of, of evaluations. Now, suppose we want to evaluate an expression such as E1 plus E2. Now, what do we know about E1 and E2? Sorry? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It could be two numbers. Yes, exactly. They could be numbers. They could be expressions. They could be expressions. So they could be another sum, yes. a multiplication, a greater than variables, etc. So, um, so how are we going to solve this? No question in evaluating e one and e two. Who likes this approach? Should we evaluate e one and e two? Yes. Does this make sense? We evaluate E1 and E2. So I'm going to put a bar above it. And above, I'm going to write the intermediate steps. So I want to evaluate E1. I wonder what memory we are going to use to evaluate E1. E1 
why not the same? Shall we use the same? Or do we have alternatives? No, we do not have alternatives. So M comma E1 is going to return something. So V1. Then we evaluate M comma E2. And what do I get? V2. V2. Now, uh, to be able to add V1 and V2, what do they need to be? Values? What can they be? What do we say? They can be uh, at least three things. We said it above. What can be? What can be? be? Has to. But what can it be? <laughs> Look there. Three options. Int, bool, or error. We have no idea whether or not the programmer wrote 3 greater than 5 plus 1. So what do we require? I'm actually going to use the, the blue marker as page delimiter. Look, flip the colors. <laughs> now, what do we need to check? That V1 and V2 are both? Who said it? Some guy that passed outside the building. Now, <laughs> come on. Do they need to be ints to be able to, to add them? No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you could get an error in return. You could get an error in return. Yes. So let's say v1 and v2 are ints. If v1 and v2 are ints, then what do we return? And we. Hang on. Which one specifically? I'm going to say zero. It's an int. Done. Yay. Which one do I return? The sum of v1 and v2. So v1 plus v2. So this was adding two expressions, which we can't do directly, but from the moment we actually have the integers, then we can use the actual, let's say, computer hardware sum of the two values. Now, v1 could also have been an expression, right? And then not return a value. With that expression to turn a value. Well, we compute it. Sorry, I forgot the small e's here. We compute it. We take memory and e1, yeah. and we get v1. Now, v1 is the value corresponding to the expression e1. Yeah, okay, but if v1 was 3 plus 5, then we have to go through this again. Yes. Okay. But it is not the same, it's, uh, it's recursive. Yeah. If, you ha if this was. 3 plus 5 plus 1, yeah. then we would evaluate 3 plus 5, we get 8, yeah. we evaluate 1, we get 1, both are ins, we return 9. So this rule would be used twice, but with separate, in separate inputs and separate outputs. So you can literally imagine that when we say evaluate E1, yeah, we evaluate E1 in isolation. Okay? This could also be a variable, this could also be an integer, whatever, but we saw that we can handle all that. Uh, now, if they are, in case the values turned out not to be integers, so m e1 goes into v1 and m e2 goes into v2 and v1 or v2 is not an int, then what do we return? Error. Then we return an error. So m e1 plus e2 will return an error. So we cover the cases of uh, v1 returning an error and v2 returning an integer. We cover the cases of uh, the case of v1 returning an integer and v2 returning an error. We also cover the case of of adding booleans, right? Which we don't want to be able to add. Or we might be the language where there is one and four is zero. But I mean, why would you do that? That's fun. Why would you do You'd have to be insane. Okay? So, nice. Um, through the evaluation
combination of expressions, can we change memory? According to our definition. What does the evaluation of an expression determine? Always a value. Does it return a changed memory? So can it change the memory? No, but by returning a value, you can't, by definition, change memory. So expressions, the evaluation of expressions, so, and this is actually what defines an expression, this arrow returns a value and it never changes memory. Yes? Which kind of makes sense. So it, it is nice to have boundaries in life. Let's consider now an expression such as And yes, I am going to use another color. I'm going to use black, actually. Now, let's consider another kind of expression. An expression such as um, int x equals to 10. Is this an expression? Sorry? We say, he says yes. He says yes as well. Maybe. So let's say memory is empty here. So this is memory at time zero. Then we evaluate this expression, you tell me. But what do you expect is going to be in M1? Nothing. So M0 is equal to the empty, empty memory, no variables. After a variable declaration and initialization, are there variables in memory? Yeah. Which ones? X. X, for example. So, if we just said an expression cannot change memory, but this thing changes memory, is it an expression? No, it's a an expression. It is an expression, obviously, which is a pen, but it's a, variable declaration. it's a variable declaration. So we call these things statements. So this is a statement. Expressions are more intuitive. But now we will deal with the heavy weights. Anything that is not an expression is going to be a statement. Yes. Now, um, let's build another arrow operation, which I'm going to call arrow. Can you, can you, can you take a, a while, I guess? Two. No. X. <laughs> this is the arrow S for statement. So obviously it takes at least the statement to evaluate. Then it does it take memory as input? Yes, of course it does. And what does it return? Does it return a value? No. It just returns a new memory. Okay. Now, uh, what kind of statements do we have? Well, that is one. So we have statement uh, int variable name equals what is right of the equals? An expression. It can be an integer, but I mean, the expression you're returning. Yes, exactly. But we'll, uh, but for the moment we'll accept an expression. So we will accept int x equals three greater than five. What shall we return? In the, what shall we do in that case? Error. We shall get an error. Exactly. So we, we can even say uh, that the value of x in memory becomes an error. Okay. Now int x equals three. This is a possible statement. Then another statement. Another example of a statement. Another example of a thing that changes memory. The stupidest of all. This is the stupidest way to change memory. Um, 
such a... Can you kick him gently? <laughs> okay, now, another simple, uh, the, the simplest statement, uh, the, uh, well, the other simplest statement of all. Okay. It seems boring, something not that. Um, and, nah, that's an expression. And also most compilers will complain if you just write three semicolon. <laughs> they actually do. They, 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 there's what not any here. Yeah, exactly. Come on, what's a simple statement? That's something that changes memory. How would you change memory? It's, it's kind of circular. So, <laughs> so, okay, how will this statement change memory? Create a new, so you can add it. It's so, X yeah. is another expression. So? X is another expression. X is another thing in memory, right? Yeah. So, after this, do we, ha do we have the same number of allocated locations sure. in memory? No, we have. How many more? One more. One more, okay? So Corresponding to name X. X. Good. So this is a way to change memory in a very fundamental way. So we add an element to memory. What if we want to keep the same number of elements to memory, but perhaps change one of them? Okay, X is another expression. And how do we call that? Uh, assigning. Assign. Yes. So X is I'm going to use the small level, but you, you can you may choose whatever you want. Oh, God. X is what? E. So X is an expression. Yes. Now let's actually define the semantics of these things. So we find uh, we have memory M. So we have memory M expression int X equals now sorry not enough space it's slightly longer memory m int x equals e evaluates to what what shall we what do we have to do we said we want to add a location of memory to m we want to add a new allocated location to m Add a new entry to M. So I'm going to say M where X is connected to something. Okay? So when we have variable connected to a value, it, it means memory plus whatever whatever we have. Is, is this readable? This is a very standard notation. So now, but what is this connected to? The evaluation of E. The evaluation of E. I wonder if we have something to evaluate an arbitrary expression. Do we, do we have it? Maybe. And what is it called? What did we call it? I'm not going to write it. What am I going to write? So what are, oh, here. The three of you. No, no, the three of you. Come on. Come on. Up. Right. Now. Don't so. All three of you, now, come on. I'm going to start counting and until you're if both up, you all three get one grade less. <laughs> if I get to three, you're in trouble. You may ask for help from the jury. Oh, yes, yes. We can also look at the previous notes. Yes, you may. What arrow is that? Yes, B. Good. Um, and what do we require B to be? This is oh yeah, B is in. Just write B is in. B is in. I meant the literal I S. Oh. <laughs> because B is just a value. And uh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Your grades are safe. I'm going to use blue as a delimiter. I thought I had bad handwriting. B is int. Okay? So we have defined the evaluation of the expression. 
we can now use it to evaluate the statement. Uh, so, and what do I put here? Let's give for granted that if v is an error, we kind of fall back error somehow. So we could say that this returns m, or we could even say it returns an error. It doesn't matter how we how we want to handle the how we want to handle the errors. Errors are kind of simple, okay? When you have the core of the of the semantics. Now, assignment on the other hand, I wonder how are we going to handle assignment? So m uh, variable x is equal to is assigned to e. What shall we return? Return the new memory. Return the new memory, yes. Which is? Memory with x, where x is a. Where x, okay. So I like the first bit. So memory where x is? Uh, the expression. The expression? Evaluation. Uh, the evaluation of the expression. So actually, these two look exactly the same. <laughs> Assignment and declaration are kind of the same. But, so here we have v, here we have m, um, e goes into v. We want v to be an int. No, no, actually we do not absolutely want v to be an int. But for variable assignment to be doable, to be successful, what do we require about memory? that x belongs to the memory m. So we can say x belongs to m. Or am I allowed to use another symbol? Or are we already overflowing? So I'm going to write in red. x is already in m. OK? So. Now, let's uh, consider another statement, which is if, the if statement. So M, if C, then A, else B. And this goes into We try to specify separate rules. The, what you wrote is mostly correct. Uh, it is uh, well. First of all, it is not very standard, so let's uh, unify that. Yeah. No standards are actually quite important. The first thing is we evaluate the condition, and then we can implicitly say. Instead of getting, instead of the fact that we will get v, we can simply say mc gives us true. This is an implicit check. Uh, mc gives us true, uh, and then we evaluate a. So, and we we evaluate with the arrow s or arrow e. Arrow s. Yes. So. M, M A evaluates to whatever a new memory, right? So M prime, and then what do I return? I return M prime. So the same could be done. I'm going to use another pen just to, 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 to clarify. Here false. I would say false, yeah. And here we would have V. So we could write two rules, one for true, one for false. Uh, now, for the while, m while c do a, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, we evaluate m and c. 
with the error of E, <laughs> and we get. So I'm going to write the value I expect directly. Which one? True. True. So if I value, if I get true, then I evaluate what? A. A. So I evaluate A with what arrow? Yes. And what do I get? M prime. M prime. And then what do I do? What do I want to do? I've done one iteration of the for loop. You check uh, C again. You did all of them and start it over as well. Start it over. So, uh, I mean, I could write two iterations, but why bother? So, I'm going to say, I do the loop again. How am I going to, with what memory? M prime. So, M prime, while C do A gives us M prime prime. Prime prime, yes. M second, then what do we return here? <laughs> oh, here we missed an S. What do we return here? M prime prime. M prime prime. How many steps is this going to do? How many? Thus? Zero, one, two, three, four? No. We don't know. Do we care? No. No, we don't. We don't. And the we don't. for it. If, so, if she is false. That is quite simple, actually. You just return M. Yes, exactly. M. M while C do A. We evaluate C. We get false. So we return M. That's what we have. Now, one thing we might want to add is that um, we could say that if variables have been added here by the evaluation of A, we remove them, for example. Okay? So we could, we could have here M third and here M second and M second is equal to M prime and then straight into two the variables of M or whatever. I'm just inventing symbols at this point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> or, or you, you get what I'm saying. So this means remove locals of A. We need to do this also for if. Also for if. Now we are forgetting a fundamental statement. So, so far we can build a program where the program is an assignment, a single assignment, that's the program, where the program is a variable declaration, a single variable declaration, then that's it. It can be an if with a bunch of stuff inside, so that is already something. Or it can be a while with some stuff inside. But how many statements do we have in a program? Just just one? Possibly infinite. No. So possibly infinite is typically answer for more than one. <laughs> how do we separate statements that happen one after the other? Please shout it through me. No, I never the semicolon. The semicolon. Is the semicolon not a statement? Why you can explain it, yeah? It's the next one. Why is it not a statement? It is a statement That's that a contains statement. as parameters what? How many? Oh, you separate the different So, so how many do I have? Side and right side. Left and right. Uh, right two. So, no. M, S1, semicolon, S2. What does the semicolon statement do? It separates. Uh, does the order matter? Yes. It executes S1 first and then S2. It executes S1 first and then S2. So, how am I going to write that in the semantics? 
you execute S1 with memory, with new memory. Okay, so M S1 goes into uh, what is this? L O E or L O S? L O S. Okay, what do I get? M prime. Then what do I do? Uh, M prime and S2. M prime and S2. L O S and I get M prime prime. M second. You and finally, enter M second. Now, my program could be variable declaration, semicolon. Or actually, semicolon of variable declaration, then semicolon. Variable declaration, semicolon. Use the variable if, and so on. You get it? So the program will always be a semicolon with an instruction, and the second element will typically be another semicolon with the rest of the instructions. So in a three form, what we will get for a program like uh, int x equals 0, uh, int y equals 1, uh, y, y greater than x, do x is x plus y, that cares this still has a syntax tree and a semantic so uh, what is this program no wait a second yes it will end yeah yeah x if y is negative or null it will never end if it enters the y but it doesn't matter i this is little guys do you know the expression pulled out of my head yeah <laughs> So, I did not think about this, so let's not think about it. Now the point is, what is this program? What is what statement is this on the outside? It's a semicolon. Yes, this is a semicolon. What is the left element of the semicolon? Empty. No. Yeah. The first instruction. Int x equals zero. The second element of the semicolon is the rest of the program. So, and the rest of the program is a semicolon. Here, on the left, int y. I'm just going to say int y, and this is is it a semicolon or a y? It is the y. So I'm gonna just say y. Okay? How do you separate y well from other things to make it not take the bottom? Brackets. You, you yeah. would put brackets or you use indentation. Yeah. Or so you well, can enter something. You could use curly brackets to separate blocks. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, ultimately. So that uh, you could say while condition do curly bracket the body curly bracket. So you know that in the parser, whatever is in the curly brackets is about a single is actually uh, oh yes actually what what do we know now that whatever it would be into curly brackets is is it a list of statements or just one statement one statement it is one statement of what type in case semicolon. we have multiple semicolon so we have actually solved the problem of representing multiple statements after each other because they are just one statement which is a semicolon no, which is elegant, because instead of having two cases, single statement or list of statements, we have only one statement. Yes, bringing uniformity means that we have one only, only one implementation. It means that we work less, we have one less code path to debug. Okay, so, are you feeling tired? No, are you, are you feeling tired? <laughs> yeah, but that, that was kind of expected. Now, um, let's move to a sample implementation. Yes, but first we take uh, five minutes of break. <laughs> now, um, I'm starting with a partial implementation. We have values. Which can either which can either be an interval boolean. Okay. So these are the things. So we are ignoring error. So we will just throw an exception for error. Uh, then we have memory, which is a 
And what do you think a map string value is? It binds to <coughs> Sorry? It binds very wide that you can do like that. Yes. What did you call it in uh, the previous slide? You called it a dictionary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something that so which is the key, do you guess? String. The string which is going to be the name, name of the variable and it connects the name of the variable to the value. Of the variable. And we I call this data type memory. Not an intuitive. Yes. This was also M in the previous um, no. previous examples. Yes. Now uh, here is a function which uh, I don't expect you to read or to want to read, which is a way to restrict memory to the variables that were previously defined. So it is to, to remove local variables. But I mean, if you want, I will put this online so you can have fun with it. Now, here is the evaluation of a statement. A statement is a variable declaration of the name of the variable and the initial expression, a variable assignment name of the variable and the expression we want to assign it. If conditional, then else, semicolon, statement, statement. Then we have an expression which is a value, so a primitive value, like 3 or true or 5 or false or whatever. A variable lookup, or whenever we want to write x, greater than, so a comparison of expressions, and add of two expressions. Now, the idea was that the moment you have seen these two, you have seen all of them. The moment you have seen this, you have, you have also seen y, etc. Okay? Let's build the eval e function. Eval e corresponds, oh, it is a recursive function corresponds to the arrow e that we just saw. It is the evaluation of an expression. What are the parameters of eval e? Memory. Memory. And an expression. What do we return? Value. We return a value, yes. So we check what is the content of e. If e is a value of int i, no, actually, if, he, if, if it is just a value, what do we return? We return the value itself. If it is a var lookup, what do we return? The value of x in memory. If it is greater than of two expressions, e1 and e2. What shall we do? We eval both of them. And what do we expect as the, resu as the result? What do we want? Two? Two ints. So match eval e, e1, eval e, e2, with int e1, i1, int i2. And what am I going to return? Oh, sorry, I forgot a piece. What should I return? Like one greater than I2. Like one greater than I2. And a boolean. Tagged as a boolean. So this is actually literally the tag, which says not, not only I give you the value, but they also tell you what kind of value it is. Any other case? Pay with mm, type error. We have a type error. Types do not uh, do not match what we expect. Uh, in case of add, I will actually copy all of this. For add e1, e2, I will evaluate e1 and e2. What do I expect? Two integers. What do I return? Integer. An int of plus. i1 plus i2. 
There we go. This is the implementation of ROE. Let's go and implement. Let's go and implement eval s. What does eval s take? Memory. Memory. And then statements. statements. Notice that I'm calling them quite similarly to the names we used before. And what do we return? Memory. Memory. Yes. So you see, the specification and the implementation are kind of the same. Okay. So match s with uh, statement. Oh yes. Let's begin with variable declaration. Variable declaration of variable name and expression. What should we do? This is a variable declaration. So what do we require? Add a new x to the memory. I add a new x to memory. Yes. So uh, net dot oh, actually m dot add. Uh, then it takes the string x and then it wants the value. So, eval e. Eval e. Uh, var assign x e. It is going to look the same, right? But so if m dot contains key x, then we can do this. Otherwise, fail with. Undeclared variable. Uh, then uh, we have all oh, the semicolon. Uh, this is this is a bit tricky. Well, s of m s one, and then we use this as the oh no let m prime. So let's use. Fully the thing we did before, m prime is eval s on s1, and then we simply return eval s m prime s2. Or we could say m second is in the second evaluation, then we just return m second. This is slightly more faithful to what we wrote before. Now we are missing if, if condition then else. What should I do? So, uh, if the condition is true, match eval e c. Match eval e memory c with bool of true. Then eval s and e in case of bool false. Ivls and is complaining. Oh yes, of course. Any other case? Notice the laziness. Type error. Gentlemen, this is an interpreter. No, you're not kidding. This is a fully working interpreter. Now uh, there is a tiny disgusting. Uh, this is not connected to a parser. So this is a small program which I'm going to read. This is the declaration of x to value int 0, the declaration of y to value int 2. Then if x is greater than y, we declare z, x is equal to y plus z plus 3. Else we declare z to be equal to true. And x is assigned to y plus 3. Okay? This sucks as a syntax. It is just a placeholder to assemble an expression slightly in a slightly less ugly manner. Now let's try to run this. Uh, eval s. We begin with the empty memory, so the, the empty dictionary. Uh, what do you expect we get? X is three and i is two. X is X is, oh, five. X is 5 and? Y is 2. Yes, and? And Z is true. And Z is true. We are not removing from scope. X5, Y2, Z true. Now, let's here, before we evaluate, 
let's get the memory, let m prime is equal to eval smp. And then we do um, blah, 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 restrict. Oh, it wants the variables over m prime. And the variables are, uh, let's think for a second, for every key value pair in m, we take x dot t. Oh, and it wants the, the set. This is not as com this is not complex, even if it kind of looks like it. I'm gonna explain this now. Uh, first, let's see if it works. The, yeah, first let's see if it works, then we'll try to explain what it does. Now, first of all, the Z has disappeared. You see? Which is what we expect, because Z is a local variable of the if. Now, uh, if I iterate M, what I get is of the pairs, key value. So X is a key value pair. If you iterate a dictionary, what do you expect? You will get all elements. And what is an element of a dictionary? In our case, we have a string and a value. So it gives x is literally a key value pair of string and value. Now, x dot key, what type does it have? String. It is the key, so it is the string. So this list is the list of all? Keys. Sorry? All keys. All the keys, and all the keys in M are? Are all the, the, the variables declared in M. So what I'm extracting here is literally all the variable names that are in scope. Then I put them in a set because it's slightly faster to query later. And then I use a restrict, which is a function that given a set of keys and a map, throws away from the map all the elements which key is not here. Okay? This is an interpreter. We do also this, this slight touch with I think this thing. Okay? Now, this is also the beginning of your next assignment. Alright? So now go have lunch. Fly in a corner if you fly. Again? Again, yes. Again. Every week. Every, every week. This is, uh, this is crying therapy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, don't, don't like you, you, you won't get a good grade for